Good evening, ladies and gents. Don't panic. I am not yours. Um, my name is Warren Rockley. For those of you who don't know me, I'm nobody. So, Yoss, however, the man you're about to see, is, well, he is a lot god. It's, there's no real uh, way to disguise that. Um, usually, when I would uh, introduce Yoss, we'd talk about his many lock-picking, lock-impressioning achievements, and it is practically impossible to discuss lock-picking, lock-impressioning, or tool, without discussing Yoss. However, those of you who were here at EMF last year, or the year before, already heard that intro, so I'd like to introduce him a slightly different way. Quite often when people are world champions and at the absolute top of their game, it becomes quite difficult to speak to them or quite intimidating. Yoss, however, the first thing you notice about a man, apart from being tall and orange, <coughs> is that you notice how approachable he is first. I was very fortunate to have uh, competed against him in the picking and impressioned alongside him. Very briefly, he was done in about two minutes and I was about 20 minutes. So very briefly, we were alongside. And from the very first time I met him, never once has he made me or anybody else feel inferior, never feel embarrassed to ask a question. <coughs> Shows uh, the character of the man. <coughs> in short, apart from being world class, he's also very humble very approachable and an excellent man to hear speak. So with that, I'll move and let him speak and introduce to the stage the one, the only, Mr. Yosfez. Hello. <laughs> Can we have a screen here? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Is that helpful? I seem to have no slides. <laughs> oh, there are people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Sorry, people. <laughs> It needs 10 minutes to warm up? No. <laughs> oh, go on then. <laughs> I don't see nobody. Oh, that's, oh, oh, we have a countdown. Minus one. There we are. going to talk about some physical security things and basically is showing keys in public why that's a bad idea. I'm a member of Tool, that's the open organization of lock pickers, and we open locks as a hobby, as a sport. And well, there's a lock picking tent where you can try that out yourself and there'll be lessons and introduction stuff and games and fun. And as a sports lock picker, we have some rules. They're not hard rules, but we have, well, they're not, they are set concrete, but they're not hard to, uh, to remember. It's like, one, you do not pick locks that you don't own, or that you have explicit permission from the actual owner that you can pick them. And there's another rule that says, do not pick locks that you rely on, because you might fuck it up. And <laughs> stuff might break, le uh, be left in your lock, and then it won't work. And then your front door doesn't open or close, or that's a problem. So those are three important rules. For the, uh, besides that, I'm also a member of the hackerspace in Arnhem. And that's, that hackerspace is that awesome that they had to blur it on Google Earth. We'll start off with a little video. Thank you. 
see that many people that that's become. <laughs> <laughs> well, this service is offered by an insurance company, so at least if your house does get robbed, they have to pay for it. Um, so that kind of makes sense. Um, I don't know where you guys live, but in my neighborhood, it's easier to find a locksmith than a 3D printing uh, outfit. <laughs> but maybe that will change over time. But then again, the technical part. You saw they took a key, put it on a spinny thingy, and basically took some 3D image of it. That's kind of cool. And that's, they kind of had to do that because it's a Belgium outfit, and Belgium is in Europe, and Europe is not in America, unlike the opinion of some Americans. But because um, in America, you have basically two brands, uh, Schlage, Quickset, and then it's expensive. So in a normal residential area, you see two brands. So if you're in America, uh, you'll have services like this. There you can just take a picture of your key, just put it on a white background, take a picture, mail it to an outfit, and for $5, they ship that key to your home. Well, personally, I would use a different address for that. <laughs> but technically, yeah, what the hell not? I mean, cool. You can have your key shipped to your house. A spare key. And they, they actually made some cool software for it. You see a, a scan of what they do. They look at, at the key. Uh, they figure out what, what the brand is. And they measure the depth. So they don't just copy your key. Because uh, you see at that first cut on the left, uh, that cut is deeper. So that has some wear and tear. And probably the copy you get through the mail will work better than the key you had. Because that will be cut to code which is kind of cool. Maybe not for a security perspective, but I, I, I think that's kind of cool. And it's neat software. And actually, it is not that new, because uh, these companies, they, well, they give you a copy of your keys, but other companies incorporated the key copying by, by picture in their, uh, well, in their business plan, actually how they do business. This is um, an outfit uh, that's, I believe it's in Manhattan, and it's called Outbox. What they do, they show up at your door physically and take your physical mail, your snail mail. And they take it away. And they scan it. So they make your physical mail digital and they mail it to you. They probably weed out the spam, I don't know. So you can reach your physical mail even when you're abroad. So they show up to your door and get your mail. And in order to do that, they need your key. So this same deal, just take a picture of the key, and they have s several uh, uh, different scenarios for it. Well, if, if your mailbox is out your gate without a lock, well, they just grab it. And if you have a locked mailbox, well, we need that key. If it's inside your gate, we need that key. If it's a door slot, uh, we don't bother. You'll get a different box, and we'll, we'll close that. And if it's a garage, give us that. But they will not go into your door, because that would, well, it's America. I mean, guns. So they probably don't want to get sued that easily. But there, so there are companies that actually do this as a business. It's kind of cool. It's not really new, the concept of taking a picture and making a physical uh, uh, key from this. This is from a couple of years ago. Some uh, students in America, they took a camera and a quite decent lens, <laughs> and they started snapping pictures. If you see in the big picture, there's a, there's a terrace, and there's a table, on that table is a book, on that book there's a couple of keys, and this is blown up with that lens. That's quite far. And of course it's staged, but it works. And if you know your locks, and if you know your American keys, then you instantly recognize, recognize this as a quick set because the peculiar shape of the head of, uh, of the key, that's always the same on a quick set. But if you know that's a quick set, you know exactly how this head is supposed to look. So even if you take a picture of an angle, uh, at an angle of that key, you can distort that key, that picture of that key, until it uh, actually has the correct shape. 
And if that, key, uh, if that head has the correct shape, then the rest of the key also. That makes sense, right? So then you can just decode it, cut to code, and you have a working key, which is kind of cool. Yeah, but then they won't work. <laughs> so yeah. Showing keys. That works with other, well, other, other keys as well. This, is, this, this used to be, and well, kind of still is, the key to uh, the German police cuffs, because they're keyed alike. Which, as a security point of view, you go like, what, they're keyed alike? Well, yeah, and they kind of must be, because if you get arrested in Germany, or anyone else for that matter, and that police officer cuffs you, takes you to the station, signs off, and gives you to another officer, it's kind of neat that he can open that d d these locks also. That's kind of cool. So it's quite normal that for a, a regular police officer that uh, every country has a keyed alike system on their handcuffs. Um, this picture was taken in the Netherlands at Haar, I think. And um, this is a 3D printed uh, one that's a copy of the original. And uh, Ray, uh, that's a fellow from SSDEF, which is basically a tool in, uh, in, in, in Germany, he knows his handcuffs. He has an extensive collection of them. And when he walked on that site, he saw police officers. And, of course, he saw handcuffs of those police officers. And he said, that's a lips. That looks exactly like the one we use in Germany. Could it be their key like? So he went to that police officer and, good sir, can I try this key on your handcuffs? And he said, sod off, and turned his back to him. Turned his back to him. <laughs> well, this is not the ultimate high-res picture of a key, but you can see it's, it's uh, high-low, high-low. You can see-ish what the combination is. I mean, you, maybe you cannot decode it from this picture, but you can compare it to that one. And that's, yeah, that looks kind of alike. So afterwards, he, well, he approached the guy again, and then it, well, he, he was okay with trying it, and well, yeah, that key opened. So the handcuffs for the Dutch and the German handcuffs for the, for, for the police are the same. So if you have this picture, which you can download from that URL, that's uh, the, the file you, uh, you dump in your 3D printer, and then it'll work. So it works. So showing your key, so bangle it about, because that's a handy place. You can grab it, but yeah, other people can grab pictures out of it and do interesting stuff with it. So that's cool. If you look at this typical clean desk environment, you see a lot of crap, but I see keys. And there's a tiny little coin besides those keys. And that's funny, because if you snap a picture of that coin with those keys and print it out, and print it out on scale, and you know the scale, because you know that coin, um, well, see, that, that's the same size. So if you go totally kindergarten on that and start cutting quite neatly with some metal uh, at, at the back and cut the metal as well. It doesn't have to be brilliant metal, but eh, just do that. With some luck, that'll fit in. And if it's shitty enough luck, that'll actually open it. So leaving your keys about, no, not a good idea. Also, if you're a uh, reporter and you manage to find a scoop saying, you can buy a key to the subway system of New York, the master key, so it opens everything. So not just getting in for free, but technical uh, cabinets as well, so you can s shut stuff off, which is, well, basically the story was, this shouldn't be the case. People are selling this lock. Terrorism and God knows what, and this is the key. And just in case that picture is not high-res high enough, they <laughs> <coughs> and they put it on a background with a known scale. <laughs> so yeah, that should be ample to reproduce that key. And they keep on doing this. Um, another story, uh, read in America, I'm sorry, they do media a lot. Um, this is a gas pump key, so the key to the actual physical machine. And, well, they're keyed alike. 
for a certain area or a certain brand. I'm not terribly sure about that. But the idea is if you go to any machine that takes an ADM and then you put your number in, well, you can, you can skin that, uh, at least uh, you used to. So you can put extra readers on it and, and make some plastic moldy so, so it, it takes your card before it gets to the actual machine. But if you can get into that machine, you can put your crapware everywhere. I mean, you can put your evil hardware in the machine. It looks neat because it looks like the original machine because it is. So let's take a look at this clip. Let's bring in NBC Bay Area's investigative reporter, Vicky Wynn. Vicky seems unbelievable. One golden key, so to speak, unlocks the whole pot. So we were surprised to see you watch the call the key to the kingdom. It is running from the back of the day when all the gas station shops were moving with the same lock. It's an easy for inspection and maintenance. Now those keys are just provided an easy access to a very lucrative crime using new high-tech technology. And in the end, we are all on the hook. You didn't mind here. A new Bluetooth-enabled dimmer that can block your credit or bed information in seconds. With this universal gas pump key, it is making it even easier for previous to install these new speakers. So I probably can decode this. And I know which blank to order. Because I need a Y11 USA. <laughs> And I can compare it if it's correct enough. Well, I spoke to an um, a, uh, elevator mechanic, well, an elevator inspector, actually, last month in New York. And he said, that's not the key to a gas pump. That key opens a shitload more. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't know that. But uh, well, he gave me a list, and he promised not to tell further. But it, it, it's way more impressive than just this. But uh, yeah. I mean, there was a thing with voting machines at some point. I don't know. <clears throat> Just plot thickens. This is, um, if you're a fireman in a big city and there is a fire in a building, you kind of want to get into that building. And it's not that handy if you have all the keys to the city because then you need an extra truck. Um, so what they do... They don't key like all, all buildings, because then everybody could just walk into their neighbor's place. So what they do, they take tiny little boxes, tiny vaults, let's put it like that, and the key to the building is in that vault, and the key to that vault is with the fire system. So the firemen have a couple of keys, not the whole, the whole set of the whole kingdom, but just a couple, and basically they become the keys to the kingdom. This is an ex-locksmith who used to make those keys, and, well, when he retired, he thought, well, I can sell those. eBay, 150. <laughs> cool. So, again, uh, media went berserk. It's like terrorism and stuff and evil, and it kind of is. Audio? Story. An intrepid reporter for America's third You kind of know where this is going. <laughs> so they print the pictures. But actually, they did think a bit, just a tiny. They contacted the locksmith. And asked the locksmith, well, I think it was a key duplication service, but he called himself a locksmith. And they asked him, is it any problem if we print those pictures? And the locksmith was like, I never cut keys from a picture. Well, can't be done. So let's run the article with pretty straight on pictures, wide background, visible, I mean, totally doable. And of course, the way the media works, this story gets picked up by other outlets and they run the same pictures and put more info in there. <laughs> so the left one.
Sorry? Empire State. Empire State, uh, which is cool. I mean, you'll get... Yeah, what you can do, what you shouldn't do, what the problem is. Traffic lights, New York, all the traffic lights, everything green, everything red, everything not working. Yeah, chaos. There's a fireman service ski which opens... Oh, we've seen that one before. So basically the price went up because it used to be 27 and if you buy the 5, it's 150. So uh, inflation, you know. And there's a fire alarm box, so you can set the alarm or kill the alarm. And uh, you shouldn't really show those keys in public because now the world has them. It's a problem. Not showing keys in public. Cool, we like these guys. And uh, one of our residential trolls, he's sitting right there, in a weird suit, and um, he, he convinced a member of, of Tech Inc., that's the, the hackerspace, um, he was like, so you got a new lock to your hackerspace? You, you sure that's a good lock? Because we have a, a lock picker in, in our group, and um, he can take a look at, uh, at the keys and figure out if that's a good one. So he sent this picture. We be in a hackerspace, well, let's see what we can do. So, well, you see this picture, and you can basically draw the shape of the, whoops, sorry. Well, you can draw the shape of that key. So, it will not fit in the lock. I mean, if the keyway is that wide, then maybe, but so, so that's not going to fit. But the shape is the correct key shape. So if you put that on a key duplicator... Key, of course. <laughs> which not everybody agrees. Lock to them, and 90 copies or something like that. 50, 50, 50 at first. We kept the three originals. Yeah, and 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 then they were like, well, now we have a good new lock, so you can't, you can't get in our our our, our building anymore. And I said, who supplied those locks? <laughs> and, and that's. Uh, but then I became a member and I even got a discount because they didn't need to give me a key. So that's uh, <laughs> it's it's all good fun. I mean, uh, we love them to death. Seriously. Okay, closer to home. Now, next. And not just that, that for some weird reason, which I don't get, you could not just buy the keys, you could buy the locks. And I was like, huh? So, so I don't get that story, but I don't really care. I, I just want to see, we want to try, can we actually grab enough info of moving pictures to make working keys. Ons komen regelmatig this and 
So we managed to lift uh, a couple of stills from that video. <laughs> this one, it's not totally clear, but probably enough. That's even better. That's nice. <laughs> so if you look at the head of that key, it's a BKS, which is cool, because that has known depth. So you know what the possible depths are of your cut, and you know which sizes and everything. Uh, we kind of guesstimate the, the, the keyway because, well, we, we can look at it and, well, it looks like a standard BK1. So we, we tried that and we kind of started looking at, at what is this enough? Uh, we came up with this picture. This is the, the key we made in a uh, tool uh, at, uh, at Eindhoven. We cut this key. <coughs> so we presumed this is the key to all the Belgium speed camps. But then we have a problem, because I, I kind of want to check that. But there were rules, like we said in the introduction. Though are not, thou are, yeah, you're not allowed to pick a lock that's not yours, or that you don't have explicit permission from the actual owner to pick. Now, technically, this is not pi uh, picking, but uh, that's, it kind of is. So, and I'm pretty sure we won't get permission to actually try this from the actual owner, so we sourced a speed cam, and um, <laughs> it is. This is the key <laughs> that opens all the Belgium speed cams. So maybe we shouldn't show. <laughs> Take a picture or a video seems to be enough to make a key from it, or, or a copy from it. But having actual possession of that key for a couple of seconds, is, that's the holy grail, because then you can do all sorts of stuff. And there are some protections, so, some, some security in place to, 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 to block that. Uh, one of the main protections is a restricted key profile. That means that the piece of metal that you stick in your lock has a weird shape. And that shape can be protected by copyright. So you're not allowed to do that, or you get the copyright police on your, on, on your outfit, and then, well, you can't do that. So if, if nobody's allowed to make that exact key, you can't, you can't buy it, because it doesn't allow, it, it doesn't exist, except from the supplier. And the, the official supplier will go like, why do you need that lock? Uh, why do you need that key? So that's not gonna happen. So restricted key profile, well, it's basically it's a piece of metal, right? So and we know how to copy keys. You just get a feeler there and a cutter there, and it, it'll, it'll cut that. This machine is an easy entry. It's for a hobbyist, it's quite expensive. It's about five grand. And what this one does, it doesn't duplicate, du duplicate the, the cuts of your key, but the other side. So it takes slugs of brass, which uh, you can buy in, in this configuration. There's a nice smiley on there because we like friendly keys. And what it does, it, instead of on this side, instead of this 
So this is a more close-up. So it actually make, it makes a, a blank key. That key. But there are also keys that, that don't even use this technique. So they have turning thingies and stuff like that. Um, but then there are other methods to, to duplicate stuff if you only have a, a split second possession of that key. Well, not a split second, but let's say a minute of that key. Tin soldiers. Yes. If you take a key and put it in a soft material, it'll leave a mark. If you choose your material right and time it a bit good, two component stuff or whatever, you can put you can make a mold that way. And even with, uh, that's an uh, as a abloy, that's quite hard to mill. But you can, if you, if, if you have a mold and just put some tin in there, that, that'll be a shitty key. Shitty as in it won't be sturdy, but you don't need that much sturdiness to actually turn your key. There are sets sold, and that's quite James Bondy, because uh, this one works with clay. So you put a clay in there, uh, you put some clay in a mold and press your key in there and you take it out and that, that's only, I don't know, 20 minutes, if, uh, 20 seconds if you prepare it correctly and then you have all the time in the world to, from that mold, produce a working key. That works, even on weird shapes keys because at, at, uh, at the top that's the original, at the bottom that's the copy and if your mold is good and you even, even if you fuck this up, you can retry because you have a working mold. You can retry because you can remelt that copy. That's kind of cool. So that works on, on quite nifty keys. And if the tolerances of your key, uh, of your lock, are, are, are better, then you need, uh, well, better clay. And probably you will not use clay at, 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 at quite, quite early uh, stage of the process. So you need some two-component thingy. Um, the stuff that your dentist used to make uh, impressions from your uh, teeth... That's a two-component thingy. That, that's a cool two-component gel, something that, that hardens quite quickly. It's perfect for this, but it's quite expensive. So befriend a dentist. That's a pro tip. Okay. So showing keys in public is... ...of Rob Gronkrijp. And people from the Netherlands know this guy probably way beyond the, those borders. This is uh, the Dutch, uh, well, I, I, I think that he's the best known hacker in the, in the Netherlands. Founder of Access for All, uh, did some, uh, well, he did tons of stuff. Look him up if, you don't, if you're not familiar with this guy. Um, he's a hacker. I, he probably knows security, right? Let's take a look. Yes. super secret nuclear facility. Uh, it's a bunker, but, <laughs> but still, I mean, it's supposed to be a secret. We've seen this still. What's wrong with this picture? It's a bit out of, 
out of focus. <laughs> That's not the actual key. It's not the key. It is not. But you didn't know that when you looked at the clip. The tension was still there. Well, some people didn't know that. <laughs> I mean, the tension was still there. It took nothing away from the story. You could still tell that story. Just show a different key. So that's perfect security. It's a bit of obscure, but who cares? This works. They still ran the story. They still have their shot. Perfect. So perfect security. I really like that. Other options are for not showing your key. This is a... A company in the US that sells a basically a shell that you can uh, put your keys in and it'll slide out. So if you're not using your keys, you just see a, a, a metal uh, box with nothing sticking out, so you can't take pictures. At some point, you have to take it out, otherwise it won't work. That's a neat idea. And what they do, uh, so there you see the, the, the bare metal of it, the bare, the bare metal of it, and um, so what they do, they produce a blank that you can take to your own locksmith, so he can make the copies, but you need that blank, so the keyway has to fit. And there they went wrong, because they send, just send us a picture of the key, <laughs> all of them, And, well, the fine print does say, for added security, so even more secure, cover the tip of the cups of your key, but that's, that's I mean, that shouldn't be added security. You're, 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 you're supplying, as, as a company, you're supplying a service that adds security. That, that's, what, that's what they sell. They sell a thing that, that makes you, that makes it harder to make, take pictures of your key. So that is added security. You shouldn't asked extra stuff to do this. So at least it shouldn't be fine print, it should be the procedure to make pictures. Make sure we can't see your cuts, right? <laughs> Even our users start to understand that this is a bad idea, right? Uh, yeah, well, some of them start to <laughs> grasp the idea that this might be less than optimal. That's quite a long time ago. What does it say, really? <laughs> well, not when I took that picture. So why would it be a good idea to celebrate the fact that you got a new house and a new key that goes with it? <laughs> and dump that on Twitter. So there's a, uh, there's a guy who mailed me uh, uh, last week, and he said, I, I started this... this uh, Yep, there he is. Hi, Dean. And he started the website, please break in. Uh, <laughs> please break dot... We live in India. And um, he basically started looking at, 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 uh, at Twitter pictures of people who do this. And, well, you just... Don't, so you have the picture of the front door, mostly. And you know their Twitter feed. So for some people, it's quite easy to figure out where they actually live from their Twitter feed. Yeah, nothing, yeah. It's a technical conference, of course they fucked it up. <laughs> <coughs> so actually there are some pictures of not just the key, but this is what my house looked like. And I kind of live in this area, so I'm pretty sure with some Google Street View f foo. Did you just take your application? Yeah, yeah, well, he blurs that out, but Twitter doesn't. Yeah. So, if you yeah, if you click through, you get to the dirty bits. And it, uh, come on, guys, this is, this is wrong. And I think the, the, the learning curve of actually learning um, that this is wrong shouldn't be 
just steep because they robbed your house. I mean, a bit earlier would be more optimum. And like I said before, that, that picture we took of, of the book with the keys on, that was from far, far away. But at the moment, cameras are everywhere. I mean, most of you have a, a mobile phone, and most of those have pretty high, high def cameras on them. And, well, there's one. I mean, you can snap pictures with it, but even video, we saw from video, it works. So maybe if you use your key, it's the same as punching in your pin code. I mean, if you put your pin code, I mean, you're, you're taught to basically shield that a bit so nobody else can see it. That's basically what you should, with, should do with keys also. Because there's cameras everywhere. I mean, if you look in London, I mean, I'm not even talking about uh, handhelds, but I mean, they're everywhere. And then there's Google Glass. So everybody was walking around. Well, now you see it every now and then, and you might kick them for it. But um, well, in, in a couple of years, everybody has, will have something like that, or uh, contact lenses who do the same, so you can't even see it. So uh, it's a problem. Okay, one more fail and I'll uh, let you guys go. The DJ will, will come in shortly. This is the design of the master key of the prison system. <laughs> of that prison. <laughs> so like I was saying, <laughs> yeah. So security can be hard, security can be easy, but it's definitely quite easy to fuck it up. I'll be taking questions now. Thank you. <laughs> and he's gone. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> if there's any questions, I'm pretty sure. I believe we have. I believe we have a mobile mic thingy. <laughs> I'm still here. Do you like to smoke? I have no idea if anybody raises his hands now for a question. <laughs> Do we have questions? Yes. There is. Could somebody throw a mobile mic out there? OK. When we find a mic. <laughs> There's a mic. Some word. What did I? <laughs> yeah, and I'm not supposed to smoke here. <laughs> Hello. No um, idea where, who, <coughs> why. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you foresee um, key technology changing in a way that will make these attacks more difficult? And if so, how? Oh, that that, that technology has changed already. Um, there there are several techniques that a key, uh, well, a, a lock manufacturer can can <laughs> use to well not render these techniques impossible, but make them way way more difficult than than they are now. But you only see those in the, the higher segment, which means more expensive, which mostly means companies. So in a residential area, like you and me, well, not me, because I'm a lock nerd, I have a stupid expensive lock. I know what locks you have. Of course you know. <laughs> I have an Asa, Asa Abloy Protec. I'm, I'm, I think it's that secure that I can't even tell that. And more people have that. So that's, that's a decent lock, but that's expensive. So. So yeah, I mean, you can have moving elements in your key, um, some other weird stuff. And a lot of that is, is not really snake oil, but it's, it's copyright protection. So, but, but some of them actually work and will make this, this technique, well, not obsolete, but infinitely more harder. And so, so yeah, lock manufacturers know what to do against it, but it's, it's a matter of costs for the consumer. There's a question up here in front. And there's a mic. Um, 
a guy in a weird Hello. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Stage. Hi. Um, question. Uh, you, you showed a lot of physical keys. Yes. Um, but isn't the future a digital key? It could be. <coughs> but Bluetooth locks, yeah, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're on an IT conference security thingy. You could probably do the math. Um, well, yeah, I mean, you see a lot of uh, uh, lock manufacturers, um, like in IT, we have a system, and the system works, and, oh, fuck, security, let's bolt that on. And uh, you see that happening in, in the physical world also. So you see normal keys, normal-ish, and they bolt some RFID thingy on, which, of course, we know is super secure. And, um, well, but then again, if, you're, if you have a lock at a facility that you care about, and you clearly do, otherwise there wouldn't be a lock on there, how do you want it to fail? Do you want it to fail open? Or fail close. Well, if there's burglaries, uh, if, if there's a burglar and the system goes down, fail close. Yeah, but if it, the building's on fire uh, and the batch doesn't work anymore, I think yes. Uh, IT building, electrical systems, whatever, batteries. Yeah, it could be cool. It's definitely cool. But is it secure? And not just security in a security sense, but in a safety sense. Um, I work at, 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 uh, at a company who does electricity and high voltage stuff. Tiny electronics don't play well in that environment. So, yeah, th we have batches and, 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 and uh, well, RFID type of things, but the official back door that, uh, well, not the back door, but, but the, the, there's always a way to have a physical key to get in, even for a firefighter or whatever, or the system goes totally black, you can still get in. So I think there will always be a, a need for actual physical keys without any, any j j pure mechanical keys without any electronic interference. And if you need extra layer of protection, well, I would say cameras or people with guns, dogs, whatever, do, do it. The, back into the physical realm. That's, that's my opinion. But I'm a lock nerd, so I like locks. <laughs> Any more questions? There's a question over there. I see a hand in the fog. So there's, more, there's also one over there. So I, I have no idea with this fog who was first, but uh, we'll get there. I'm very short distances, Jos. OK. I was just, just thinking of a, a mechanical key. Yeah. And is it possible, from a manufacturing point of view, it should, as far as I can think, be possible to make a cylindrical or a hollow section key with the elements on the inside? Yes, they exist. How, and they are stupid how, expensive. <laughs> they might be expensive, but why are they? Because it, it should be fairly simple to make the key. How do you make the mechanism that engages with the key? What's the actual physics in terms of the moving part of the lock? Actually, the guy who handed you the microphone is going to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Outsourcing. Um, <laughs> anything. Lock technology, anything is possible. It's all to do with costs. I'm a, a working locksmith, and I struggle to get anyone to pay more than 25 quid for a lock. And so um, a very common, um, a very well-known lock but not very well used, Le known to um, lock geeks, is a, a lock called a Brahma. It's a cylindrical lock, and it has wafers that move from the outside. Painted in 1800-odd, been going on for about 200 years, but they're maybe three, 400 quid to fit. Um, they're nigh on impossible to sight read, because if you get fluff in the end of them, they don't work. So they come with a little cover. So you can't really sight read them. If you did sight read them, who do you know is going to make you a Brahma key other than the Brahma factory or Nigel, where the idea, um, will make you one. <laughs> and they've been gained hundreds of years. The, the patents are old, and you can, if you're interested, look up Brahma, B-R-A-M-A-H, and all the information you need there. And even if you look at, 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 at a more uh, common, well, the, the newer system, if you look at a dome, a dome system D, uh, well, you guys don't know it, but it's, it's an evil-looking lock. Uh, well, actually, it's an evil-looking key. It's basically two keys milled, well, well, fused together. So it's, uh, what, 13 pins? 
Well, yeah, but, but the problem with that lock, it's technically it's beautiful. It's, it's a bitch to pick. It's not unpickable, which is basically no lock, but it's quite hard to pick. But manufacturing that key, if you need a duplication, that could only be made at, at the factory at Dome. And they had to cut a piece of metal at both sides, and then bend it to a key shape, to their key shape, which they did. But it was that expensive that the replacement key was, I don't know, 40, 50 euros. And like you heard Warren, that's about double the price people will pay for their lock, let alone their key. So, yeah, I mean, if you want quality, that's going to cost you. And, of course, it's, it's all a matter of what is your risk profile. If this is your server room, uh, you probably don't want to go like, ah, yeah, it's 20 euros more, let's not. If it's your business, probably not. And it also depends where you live, of course. I mean, if it's a high crime area, whatever. So, so it, it, it's all risk profile. There was a question over there. Uh, hold on a second for the microphone. Uh, just a, an anecdote. The thing about making a physical copy of a key by impression on a material was yeah. done um, in the cop show called The Sweeney in the mid-'70s using cuttlefish which is given to, bur to budges to sharpen their beaks against. Uh, I'm kind um, of known with that okay, method, yeah. 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 Uh, no, but it like, goes back to mid at least the mid-70s in a TV show. But uh, anyway, um, the second question, H how many bits of information in, in a typical key? Um, in a typical... Uh, mm. Yep. How many yeah, bits of info... I know, yeah, I know typical is uh, the Warren, least, um, you know that? Uh, yeah. Um, because I didn't a, do the math that far. It's not that much. As a, a small aside, um, I recently worked for a company in London doing this all day long, just making keys and photographs. And so um, standard key is five pin or possibly six pin. Um, yep. So standard Yale, maybe you're only going to see seven or maybe eight heights at most six pins. So six so to the six. Six to the power of <coughs> Six, eight. eight, nine. You're never going to see more than nine, yeah, really. So, so. so it's not... <coughs> very much. But that, that's not that big of a problem, because if you... Because um, I don't know where you live. Because, <laughs> I mean, if, you, if everybody would have the same brand and type of lock, there's a... Uh, that's the birthday attack, basically. There, there will be two people who have the same key. But... Sorry? Still didn't I see that. what you mean. He said, um, from an image processing point of view. So okay. looking yeah. at the, the image and decoding it, it's very, very simple. Well, yeah, very yeah, because there, there are only a, a yes, finite yes. number of depths. I believe my time is around up. Maybe we have one time for one more, if there is one more. And we're done. Very good. Thank well, you very I'll much. get you one oh, more oh, question. Oh, sorry, no, well, well, there's one, one question. We'll take one uh, front row, uh, Warren. Oh, there's two. Can okay, two? so uh, as a lock nerd, uh, how do you secure your own home? Just curious. How I secure my own home. <laughs> <laughs> and can you show us pictures? I'm not going to show the key. Don't tell him, Pike. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> if a burglar would attack my home, and it happened before, um, I'm not saying they can't get in. But it probably will not go through my lock, because, well, it's way easier to make a new door for that matter and or or just mill through that door can, or whatever so can yeah. i add a bit for you yos um last year at lockcon yeah. i returned from lockcon to find that my house had been burgled <laughs> and he's a locksmith as a as a smaller side um in my house was maybe thirty thousand pound or more in um auto lock gear for VW and Audi Group and some other car manufacturers. Yeah. And so um, my house was broken in, the CCTV was taken, the remote monitoring of the CCTV <laughs> was taken out, roughly 90 seconds to get to my back door, take the back door out, take the CCTV and all the locks, um, and that was a team of locksmiths who broke into my house. Okay. It, and my house is quite secure. Um, if they want it... They will get it. Yeah, so those like tools were only available from my home, and that's where they took them from. It is a risk profile, <laughs> whatever you have. We have one more question, front row, that gentleman over there, and then we're, we're call it a wrap. Uh, aren't there still far more people who have the skill to pick a lock than the ability to make a key from a picture? <laughs> um, I don't know. Because... 
I mean, to, to be a lock picker takes training and skill. And this is a handicraft. So it's a total... <laughs> it is. I mean, it's taken... I mean, if you, can, if you can work with tin soldiers, you can do this. And it's... Of course, if you, if you know what a key is supposed to look like, but uh, hello, Google. It's, it's, it helps. So I think it's a different skill set. It, it's... So I don't know what the numbers do. I think if people will... We'll, we'll try this, then it's way easier. I need to get off. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. The thing nice. is, Jos, for a lock picker, so you have to take the lock picker there. So if only you can pick that lock, you've got to go to wherever the lock is. Whereas if you can make the key from the photograph, you can True. set the key worldwide. Nobody skilled needs to be there. Yeah. I mean, with this technique, you end up with a working key I can give to other people. And yeah, we're kind of done. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>